To some more difficult news today, the NFL family is mourning the loss of Green Bay Packers and Pro Football Hall of Fame running back Paul Horning. Nicknamed the Golden Boy because of his blonde hair, Horning spent his entire professional football career with the Packers, where he won four NFL championships and was named to the NFL's all-decade team of the 1960s. A generation of football fans wanted to be just like him. Here's a look back at Paul Horning's incredible Hall of Fame career. There are many football legends in Green Bay, but none quite like Paul Hornet. He was the golden boy, a Heisman Trophy winner at Notre Dame. So handsome, he earned more in endorsements than he did playing football. Paul was our first poster boy. He was good looking, had a great personality. Uh, everybody liked him. Men liked him, women loved him. I mean, it was a case of, this is a, your American hero. But Horning was more than a pretty face. He was a 6'2", 220-pound halfback and one of the game's toughest competitors. Having the golden boy image that I did have and being a single uh, bachelor, liking the good life, so to speak, I've always been a kind of a football player who would enjoy football to the fullest. I, uh, I've always uh, enjoyed the Sunday football game probably more than anything else that uh, I have ever uh, done in my life. With his combination of running, passing, and kicking, Horning was a true triple threat. In 1960, he set a league record by scoring 176 points in a 12-game regular season. Had Paul Horning played with another club, had he not played under Vince Lombardi, as wild as he was, you may never have heard of Paul Horning. He had a lot of talent. He played quarterback at Notre Dame, uh, I mean, a big guy. He was like a fullback playing halfback. And he could throw the ball, kick the ball, and run the ball. So he was really a triple threat. He was an all-around athlete. During the 1961 season, Horning was called to National Guard duty. President Kennedy, as a personal favor to Vince Lombardi, got Horning a leave which allowed him to play in the championship game against the Giants. Horning scored 19 points, a postseason record at the time, as the Packers won their first world title since 1944. But the following year, Horning was suspended by Commissioner Pete Rozelle for betting on NFL games. In 1964, Horning was reinstated. He rejoined the Packers and picked up where he left off, scoring over 100 points for the third time in his career. Once you retire from professional football, you look back on those years at the greatest years of your life. You can never recapture the moment when you're standing in Lambeau Field and you scored a touchdown and those fans are behind you. That's something special. That's a special time in your life. And, you know, to have 10 years of that... I present the Golden Boy, Paul Horning. In 1986, Paul Horning received the ultimate honor when he was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Our thoughts and prayers are with Paul's wife, Angela, and their entire family. Paul Horning was 84 years old. greatest football players of all time died today. Paul Horning was 84. Nicknamed the Golden Boy, Horning won the Heisman Trophy in 1956 as Notre Dame's quarterback. After being drafted number one by the Packers, he played halfback and was part of their dynasty, winning four championships. In 1961, he was the league's MVP. Horning was a, a one-man scoring machine as he finished his Hall of Fame career with 66 field goals as well. Keith Olbermann has more. He was the golden boy. There have been greater players for the mythic fighting Irish dynasty at Notre Dame. There have been greater players for the mythic Vince Lombardi dynasty at Green Bay. There has not been anyone greater who played for both. In 1956, as third-ranked Notre Dame's dynasty collapsed, senior quarterback Paul Horning led the fighting Irish in passing and rushing and scoring and kickoff returns and punt returns and punting. He won the Heisman on a team that won two games. Nobody can win the Heisman Trophy on a losing football team. It'll never be done anymore. Uh, if I hadn't have been in Notre Dame, I wouldn't have won the trophy. 
The obvious first pick in the subsequent NFL draft, he went to the decrepit Green Bay Packers. Bart Starr had been there a year. Jim Taylor and Jerry Kramer would get there in 1958. Vince Lombardi would arrive in 1959. He called me after he was named head coach, and he told me then, he said, look, Mr. Harding, he said, I'm going to tell you one thing. You're either going to be my left halfback or you're not going to be playing professional football. That's the way it is. That turned Horning's whole career around because as a quarterback, he wasn't doing that well. Paul fit perfectly with what Vince wanted as a halfback, which was a multi-dimensional type of a player. If you look at this play, what we're trying to get is a seal here. In 1960, behind a Lombardi innovation called the Green Bay Power Sweep, Horning rushed for 13 touchdowns, caught two more, passed for two more, kicked 15 field goals, and 41 PATs for an NFL record 176 points. Horning enters across the 25, down to the 20, to the 15 yard line. Beautiful run by Paul Horning. And the next year, he was MVP. While on active Army Reserve duty, holiday leave policy at Fort Riley meant that Private Horning had to be on the base on New Year's Eve, which was the day of the NFL title game against the New York Giants. Horning was granted a special exemption by President Kennedy. The President of the United States got me a two-week pass. You know, not too, ma not too many times that's happened. All my career, that's the biggest thing that's ever happened to me. Horning ran six yards for the championship game's first score, kicked three field goals and four points after, scoring literally more than half of the Packers' points in the 37-0 shutout that gained Vince Lombardi his first title. Horning and the Pack repeated in 1962 and won again in 65 and 66, but the nerve problem, which Horning rarely mentioned, reduced him to a part-time role. It was not injury alone that circumscribed Horning's greatness. On April 17, 1963, Commissioner Pete Rozelle suspended Horning and star tackle Alex Karras of the Lions indefinitely for betting on NFL games, for associating with gamblers, and in Horning's case, for giving one gambler, quote, his opinion of the outcome of various games. Later, Horning said he confessed to Rozelle, but warned the commissioner about being made a scapegoat a congressional subcommittee was investigating gambling. I told Pete, I'm not going to say a word about anybody else but myself. Don't give me other guys who I knew that gambled and who you know that gambled. I said, if I have to go to Washington and I have to raise my hand, then the National Football League's got a big problem. Because I'm going to tell the truth. Horning was reinstated for the 1964 season. Inquisitive, outgoing, erudite, and one of the centerpieces as pro football exploded to national dominance in the early 60s, he was also a natural for television. He worked CBS games, often alongside Lindsey Nelson or Vin Scully. He was the sideline reporter at Super Bowl XII. Paul Horning was the first player to win the Heisman and be chosen first in the NFL draft and win the NFL MVP and be inducted into the College Football Hall of Fame and into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. But ultimately, he was what the Louisville sports writer Tommy Fitzgerald described after seeing him in the Fighting Irish freshman game on May 15, 1954. The famed Golden Dome on Notre Dame's campus had a young rival today, a golden-haired football player named Paul Horning. Paul Horning, the Golden Boy. Keith Elberman reporting. You see this long list, his resume. Vince Lombardi once said of the Golden Boy, quote, inside the 20-yard line, he is one of the greatest I have ever seen. He smells that goal line. Morning is survived by his wife, Angela. He was 84 years old. All Hall of Famer and proud Louisville native Paul Horning died today at the age of 84. WHS 11 went right back to our amazing archives and we went to 1986. Paul Horning was then inducted into the NFL Hall of Fame and Louisville celebrated his win that year with a parade. Here it is. I waited a long time to get here, but this weekend I'll be able to take with me forever because this is the most important weekend of my life athletically. Started off in my hometown, Louisville, on Thursday and continuing on now forever. It's a wonderful morning. It's, uh, it's 
spent two and a half miles now on this street. I've never seen anything like it. People, people, people. It's all, and they're energetic as my heart's beating. It's been a great morning. <laughs> What a crowd there, and uh, he grew up in the Portland neighborhood. Dennis Ting is joining us now live with more on Paul Horning's legacy here in Louisville. I was trying to figure out, Dennis, what kind of car he was riding in. It looked like a, uh, a Chrysler. <laughs> You would know better than me, Doug. Well, Paul Horning might be known outside of Louisville for his football career, but here in his hometown of Louisville, he's known for a lot more than just what he accomplished out on the field. Paul Horning grew up in the Portland neighborhood and started at Notre Dame, where he won the Heisman Award for the best player in college football and then had a Hall of Fame playing career in the NFL with the Green Bay Packers in the 1960s. He's also the namesake of the Paul Horning Award, which is given to the most versatile player in college football. Horning struggled with dementia in his last few years, but those who knew him say he would still continue to go out his way to help others and to help give back to his hometown. He always wanted to, to have a good joke for people. He always wanted to make people feel at ease. He always wanted to let people know that he was, um, that he was a guy that loved life and lived life and he loved people and he loved what he did. Horning's family is asking for people to make donations in his honor to the Norton Sports Health Athletics and Learning Complex in West Louisville through the Louisville Urban League. That, of course, is that track project, track and field project that has been going on for a while. Now, I spoke with Sadiqa Reynolds with the Urban League a little bit earlier. She says she was surprised to hear that he was asking for donations to go into that project. She said the Urban League didn't solicit any donations from Horning or his family. Instead, she was told that this was something that he saw that was going on in his community, and he just wanted to give back. We'll have a lot more on it's coming up later tonight on the night team. But for now, we'll send it back to you. Thank you, Dennis. He really did love Louisville, mentioned it all the time, and of course lived right here until his final has lost a football legend. Louisville's Paul Horning was a true star in the early days of the NFL and for Notre Dame University. The former Green Bay Packer NFL Hall of Famer died today at the age of 84. He was a major star who loved that he grew up in the Portland neighborhood. And one of his last interviews was with WHS 11 sports director Ken Spencer, who's here now with a look back at Paul Horning. Ken? Paul Horning was a force. When you were in his presence, you could still feel the competitive fire that burned from within. Who better to describe the golden life than the golden boy himself? Paul Horning didn't start as the golden boy. He began as a boy from West Louisville who attended Flagey High School. The Portland area was really my home base. I learned how to do the things I've always done in sports right there. If it wasn't for that Marine Hospital across the street, I don't know what kind of player I would have been because I learned, I learned how to be an athlete there. From there, at his mother's request, Horning went to Notre Dame. In 1956, despite a losing record, Horning won the most coveted award in college football, the Heisman Trophy. I've always said I would have never won the Heisman Trophy had it not been at Notre Dame. Back in those days, it was so much different than the Heisman of today. There wasn't any hype. There were, actually, there, was a t there wasn't one story about the Heisman Trophy until November. He was drafted first overall in 1957 by the Green Bay Packers. Horning led the NFL in scoring three times while winning four NFL championships and the first Super Bowl with the Packers. In 1967, legendary coach Vince Lombardi said, quote, Paul Horning is the greatest player I've ever coached and the greatest I've ever seen on the football field within the 20-yard line. I present the golden boy, Paul Horning. Horning was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1986. This is the greatest day of my life. I waited a long time to get here. But for Horning, Louisville was always home. In 2006, this statue was unveiled outside of Louisville Slugger Field. You know, this is a, at the top of the heap, let's put it that way. I, I couldn't be uh, accorded any, any better pat on the back than something like this, especially from your hometown. And that's what really makes it special for me. Uh, I love Louisville. In 2010, the Louisville Sports Commission launched the Paul Horning Award, an honor presented to the most versatile player in college football. Great all-around football player. To win the Paul Horning Award, you've got to do more than one thing on the football field. You've got to be experienced and you've got to be versatile. An award molded in his image forever. Louisville's golden boy. 
Paul Horning loved where he grew up, loved the West End, wanted to always give back. That's why in lieu of flowers, the family requests donations be made to the Norton Sports Health Athletics and Learning Complex via the Louisville Urban League. Football star known around the country. Football Hall of Famer Paul Horning has died this morning. Today in Louisville, he was 84. And new on the night team, we found to the end, he showed why he loved his bearing of growing up in West Louisville, leaving in his final wishes a big surprise. Dennis Ting tells us how people in his hometown are remembering Louisville's golden boy. He always said, I've been on full scholarship all my life. I'm not about to change now. It's impossible to talk about Paul Horning without mentioning football. One of the gridiron greats, a Heisman winner at Notre Dame. I didn't know how important it was at that time. And a Hall of Famer with the Green Bay Packers. I've never seen anything like it. People, people, people. Can you imagine a 225 pound guy coming around the corner block? If you were a cornerback, you had some options and none of them were any good. You hear about the golden boy. Horning is known to younger fans as the namesake behind the Paul Horning Award, given to the most versatile player in college football. In recent years, Horning battled dementia, but those close to him, like Carl Schmidt, say the disease couldn't completely rob him of his spirit and his love for football. Minnesota was playing at Green Bay, and he took the Packers straight up against the Vikings. And somebody asked him, Paul, you must really like Green Bay. He, he says, I never bet against the Packers when I was playing. Why should I start now? But as Horning became a star, he never forgot about his hometown, and his legacy goes beyond just the banners and the statues. In fact, part of the legacy is still being built at what will be the Norton Sports Health Athletics and Learning Complex. He grew up in the West End. He, my understanding is he was from Portland. And so this is something that just struck him as something that he should do for this community. Louisville Urban League CEO Sadiqa Reynolds says the Urban League didn't reach out to Horning, but yet he still decided to donate $10,000 to the project earlier this year and she was stunned to learn his family asking for donations to be made in his honor to the facility. It sends a message to the children of his West Louisville hometown. There are people, even superstars like Paul Horning, who care. It does make him a golden boy in my eyes, certainly. Herb Adderley passed away from the Lombardi era, and now the golden boy is gone as well. Paul Horning dying at the age of 84 after a lengthy battle with dementia and other health issues. The former Packers running back played in Green Bay for nine seasons and rushed for almost 4,000 yards. Now in 1959, Vince Lombardi moved Horning from fullback to halfback, and that immediately had a huge effect on his game. He led the league in scoring for three straight years, including 176 points in 1960. That's a record that stood for 46 years. He also had 19 points in that 61 NFL championship game against the Giants, which the Packers won 37 to nothing and he was named the league's MVP that season. But well, once Lombardi arrives, he not only becomes the star of the Packers, but he's one of the biggest stars in the NFL. I mean, he's a celebrity. And because he's the golden boy, um, I don't know that any Packer, for example, had ever gotten any kind of endorsement opportunities, national commercials. Uh, Horning was a four-year letterman in high school football, basketball, and baseball, which is pretty amazing. He's still the only football player to win the Heisman Trophy, be selected first overall, win the NFL MVP, and be inducted into the Pro Football and College Football Halls of Fame. Game for the Fighting Irish. After a sensational spring practice his freshman year, Horning earned the Golden Boy moniker for his golden hair and his golden touch with the football in the shadow of the Golden Dome. During his three-year career at Notre Dame, Paul played every position in the offensive backfield in addition to starring at defensive back and handling kicking duties. He twice earned All-America honors at quarterback. In 1954, Horning won the coveted Heisman Trophy on a Notre Dame team that won just two games. He remains the only player from a team with a losing record to win football's highest award and he went on to lead the Packers to three NFL championships and a Super Bowl crown. Horning is one of just six Notre Dame players to be enshrined in both the college and pro football halls of fame. Was 84 years old. News 9 sports director Brad Hansen is joining us in studio now with more. Brad. 
Well, called the golden boy, Paul Horning was known as one of the best running backs to ever play the game. Vince Lombardi also called him one of the best players he's ever coached. Now, he was drafted first overall by the Packers in 1957. He went on to lead the league in scoring a number of times, including putting up 176 points in 1960, a record that stood until 2006. Hornig was a key part of four Packers championships and remains the only player ever to win the Heisman, be drafted first overall, and be inducted into both the college and pro football halls of fame. Paul was battling dementia. And lost, uh, dementia. He lost that battle today, but his legacy does live on in the Paul Horning Award that's given to the most versatile college football player each year. Melissa. Paul Horning was football's golden boy, but his life was even more colorful than the nickname. On the field with the Fighting Irish and the Packers, Horning found fame. And after dark, often with teammate Max McGee, he usually found a cocktail in pleasant company. Horning, recognition and reputation well earned, died Friday at the age of 84. He won the Heisman Trophy in 1956, quarterbacking a 2-8 Notre Dame team. Green Bay drafted him number one overall, and when Vince Lombardi arrived two years later, he turned Horning into an all-around offensive threat. His 176 points in 1960 remained second on the NFL's single-season scoring list. His suspension for the 1963 season for betting on NFL games remains a stain. Four times an NFL champion, he won the league's MVP award in 1961 while serving on active duty with the Army and using weekend passes to play games. From the commissioner, Roger Goodell, we are deeply saddened by the passing of Green Bay Packers legend Paul Horning, who thrilled a generation of NFL fans with his versatility, athleticism, and personality that made him a favorite of legendary coach Vince Lombardi. Paul was a leader of Green Bay's dynasty in the 60s and instrumental in growing the popularity of the Packers in the National Football League. On behalf of the entire NFL family, we send our heartfelt condolences to Paul's wife, Angela, his family, and Packer fans around the world. Morning, Louisville born, raised, retired, and now laid to rest. Loved a good horse. He is the fourth Hall of Famer from the Lombardi era Packers to pass away in the last nine months, though. Tough for the franchise. Preceded by Willie Wood, Willie Davis, Herb Adderley, Paul Horning, dead at 84. Wanted to share this picture taken about a, a year and a half ago. It, it meant so much to me then and even more now given Paul Horning's death Friday. It was a Heisman House interview, one of those conversations where you, you can't believe who you're talking to. You're, you're hanging on every word and you're hoping somebody took a picture. If you have a sense of football history, then you know what a big deal Paul Horning was and will always be. I mean, his nickname alone, Golden Boy, come on. A quarterback at Notre Dame when he won the Heisman in 1956 in Green Bay, Vince Lombardi turned him into a halfback and said inside the 20-yard line, Horning smelled the goal line. President Kennedy once intervened with Horning's military duty at Lombardi's request so as to get Horning back in the huddle for the 1961 NFL championship game. The Packers won. Horning accounted for 19 points and won the NFL MVP that year. He was the man before anyone called anyone the man. You're looking at a guy who lived his life on scholarship. Full ride. That from Paul Horning. Dead at 84. Heisman fraternity is one of the closest in all of sports, and it lost a valued member on yesterday when the legendary Paul Horning passed away at the age of 84. The golden boy played for Notre Dame, won the Heisman in 1956. He remains the only man to win the Heisman Trophy while playing for a losing team. His charisma was evident in all the Heisman gatherings, even in recent years from guys generations younger. The golden boy, Paul Horning, what a remarkable career and legacy he leaves dead at the age of 84. Sad news to report in the world of football. Paul, Paul Horning, who starred for Notre Dame in the 50s and with the Green Bay Packers in the 60s, has died at the age of 84. Horning is one of only seven players to win the Heisman Trophy and be named NFL MVP. He won the Heisman in 1956 while playing for a 2-8 and eight Notre Dame team, becoming the only player to win the award with a losing team. Horning was inducted into both the pro and college football halls of fame. The golden boy, truly one of the great legends of the sport.
All right, also some sad news to pass along. Paul Horning, a true legend of both college and pro football, passed away yesterday at the age of 84. Born in Louisville, Kentucky in 1935, Horning was a two-time All-American at Notre Dame, winning the Heisman Trophy in 1956. He is still the only player on a team with a losing record to win the award. Horning went on to star for the Green Bay Packers, who drafted him number one overall in the 1957 NFL Draft. Our hearts go out to the family and everyone who loved the great Paul Horning. We'd like to honor the memory of the great Paul Horning, known as the Golden Boy. The four-time champion with the Green Bay Packers passed away this week at the age of 84. Somber note, let's take the time to honor an NFL legend and a member of our CBS Sports family who passed away on Friday. Known as the Golden Boy, Paul Horning was the first player to ever be a Heisman Trophy winner, drafted number one overall, an NFL MVP, and inducted into the Pro and College Football Halls of Fame, winning four NFL championships in the process. Horning also spent five seasons with the NFL on CBS, even covering Super Bowl XII as a sideline reporter. His legacy is best described by his nickname, Golden, and he will be missed by all who loved him.